Imagine you're in a public bathroom. Suddenly you spot a weird message on the toilet paper telling you not to panic. And then, out of nowhere, someone's peeking at you from outside your stall. Yeah, that's the start of this wild movie we're talking about today. So brace yourselves because it's a confusing roller coaster. Also, stick around, and I'll break down the most confusing aspects of the movie in the end so do not miss that part. So we kick things off with this guy named Pete, coming into the public bathroom. It seems he is in a hurry. Suddenly he gets a call from his colleague. It seems like they are waiting for him in some presentation or some board meeting. The man argues with his colleague and tells him that he is on his way and asks him to stall the meeting for some time. His behavior indicates that he is an ambitious person willing to go any distance to achieve his goal. Anyways, when washing his face Pete found that there was no paper towel in the towel loop. During that time there was an old generator cleaning the bathroom. Pete noticed him and he snapped his finger and asked for paper towels very disrespectfully. Thus the movie establishes how bad of a person Pete is. The generator also calls out Pete as a bad person and says that one day he will be able to get a good look at himself and at that time he might not like what he sees in himself. But Pete being an arrogant SOB ignored whatever the generator says. And went inside a stall to relieve himself. Well, guess what? Right there in the stall, Pete stumbles upon a roll of toilet paper with the cryptic message do not panic. Now, Pete's scratching his head, trying to make sense of the situation, when suddenly, he spots a pair of feet right in front of his booth. Someone's banging on the toilet door. Pete, assuming the person outside is waiting for him to wrap things up, decides to yell back, urging him to walk away since he's going to take a bit. But to his surprise, Pete realizes there are eyes peering at him through a tiny gap in the door panel. Creepy, right? Frustrated, Pete yells at the guy, and the guy walks away. But wait, there's more. Once the guy leaves, Pete hears a lot of noise, like people are fighting. Pete yells at them to stop, but it seems like no one's listening. Getting frustrated, Pete leaves the stall and sees no one around. Confused, he tries to leave the bathroom, but surprise, the door is locked, trapping him inside. Suddenly, he hears a noise, like someone just went into one of the stalls. But there's no one there, even though Pete looks everywhere after leaving the stall. This is all too confusing for Pete. He decides to follow the sound and ends up in front of the stall where the person probably went in. He knocks on the door, and from the other side, he hears the exact same reply he gave a few seconds ago. Surprised, Pete sees he's standing in the same spot where the strange man was a few minutes ago. He tries to peek inside, but wait a minute, it is he himself inside the stall. Pete's clueless about what's going on. By mistake, he opens one of the stall doors, and bam, there's a person who looks exactly like him. This guy comes out and starts attacking Pete. Meanwhile, we, the viewers, hear the sound of Pete shouting from one of the toilets. The same sound Pete heard when he was inside the stall is now happening outside of his stall. The person goes after Pete, locks him in a stall, and here comes another Pete-looking person, equally confused. This new Pete opens the stall, and the angry Pete inside attacks him, managing to lock him in the booth. Now, both we the viewers get it, he's not stuck in an ordinary bathroom, it's something way worse. It's a time loop. He opens the door again, but it's empty. So, he tries the other door and, surprise, finds another Pete, but this time, shockingly, the guy's dead, seems like he shot himself. Pete's grossed out and ends up throwing up next to the deceased Pete. In the midst of his confusion, without realizing, Pete starts using the toilet paper with the mysterious message. Now, it's not just don't panic on there, there are a bunch of messages. As he reads, he figures out he probably wrote them for himself. In the message it is explained that, he is trapped in a time paradox. And the time in the toilet continuously going forward and backward randomly. To break free, he's gotta take out his future self. As Pete's absorbing all this info, a stall door swings open, and here comes another Pete. This Pete seems to have a clue about the chaos, hinting that he's from the future. But not your usual straight line future. He's from a different version, and every time our Pete here makes a different move or decision, it spawns a new timeline with a different future Pete. Now, here's where things get messy. Past Pete suddenly recalls the message on the toilet paper. Kill your future and close the door to come out of the loop, which means, future Pete has to bite the bullet to break the time loop, and it's got to happen at exactly 3.30, the same time the dead Pete's watch was broken. So, who's stepping up to sacrifice themselves? 
Well, it's a head-scratcher, especially considering our boy Pete is known for being a bit self-centered. They dive into a debate, trying to figure out who's gonna take one for the team. The logical choice would be future Pete to make the sacrifice, but he argues he can't die because he time-traveled from the future, technically making him the past. However, the Pete from the past manages to talk some sense into future Pete, convincing him to step up and get into a stall. Now from this point we the viewers can see two different timelines, one with the Pete from the past who locked himself in the stall and the future Pete who was outside supposed to sacrifice himself. But it turns out that Pete from the future is still not convinced about sacrificing himself so he tries to open the door of the stall and argue with Pete from the past. But to his surprise, he finds out that Pete is dead. This time there was no gun in his hand and his clock is also not on 3.30, which means that someone must be there who shot him. Terrified he tried to get out of the toilet, but it was shut tight. Cut to the other Pete from the past, it seems like in this version of the timeline he is not dead. He came out of the stall and tried to get out but he found out that the door was still locked. Suddenly in this timeline, another Pete comes out of the same door. It seems that this Pete followed the same actions taken by the existing Pete by asking the future Pete to sacrifice himself. But, surprise surprise, it didn't work out. Maybe because future Pete wasn't quite ready to make the ultimate sacrifice. Now, we've got these two Pete's back at square one, arguing over who's going to step up. It's clear as day that neither of them wants to take one for the team. So, here we are, watching multiple Pete's in this timeline, going at each other, fuming that future Pete didn't do the deed, resulting in this chaotic Pete gathering. While this Pete drama unfolds, our main guy, the original Pete we've been following, finally realizes this isn't going anywhere. No Pete's willing to sacrifice himself, and we're stuck with a bunch of Pete's multiplying. So, he takes matters into his own hands. He decides to break the loop by killing the other Pete's present in the toilet. Yep, that's exactly what he does. He ends them. Now, cut to future Pete, the one we left contemplating sacrifice. He's still trying to get out of the toilet, but every time he opens a stall, there's a dead Pete inside. Suddenly, he spots another Pete rushing out of a stall. This Pete, in a hurry, tells scared Pete, this is it, last request, and slams the door shut. In a different timeline, we witness gun-wielding Pete take down everyone and slip into a stall, hoping the loop would finally close. But shockingly, when he opens the door, he finds himself back in the timeline where future Pete is still struggling to exit the bathroom. So, the timelines merge once more, and past Pete, armed with a gun, faces off with future Pete. No more bickering this time, gun-wielding Pete is set on ending the future version. Future Pete attempts to reason, but it's futile. There's no point arguing when both are the same person, and gun-wielding Pete knows all the tricks up his sleeve. It's in this moment that future Pete finally comprehends the generator's words, realizing he's truly a bad person. Suddenly, the flickering lights that have been a constant throughout the movie suddenly stops, signaling us the final act. Gun-wielding Pete aims his weapon at future Pete, offering him a last request. To everyone's surprise, Pete figures something out and, to avoid his fate, swiftly closes the stall door. Frustrated, gun-wielding Pete fires through the door, only to find that no one is there. Meanwhile, the Pete who narrowly dodged death steps out of the stall, keeping an eye on another version of himself still struggling to escape. He tells this version, this is it, the last request, and slams the door. Now, as viewers, we catch on, he's gone back in time, leaving a clue for himself on how to avoid his demise. Cutting to the chase, Pete opens the door, finding himself back in the future where the gunshot rang out. Frustrated gun-wielding Pete is on the hunt for the missing body. Without hesitation, Pete heads straight to the stall and shuts the door. The moment he closes it, the bullet fired by the other Pete, now trapped in the toilet, time travels back and hits him. And just like that, the time loop snaps shut. Pete is finally free from the loop's clutches. Thoughtfully, he writes the don't panic message on the toilet paper, imagining that in the vast universe, there might be other Pete's in similar binds, desperate to break free. This is the first time we witness Pete acting selflessly, a redemption of his character. Pete leaves the toilet, and there you have it, boom, the movie concludes. Now, I'm sure you've got a bunch of thoughts and questions, especially about that last moment, how Pete figured out how to close the loop. Well, for me, I think Pete made a clever move when faced with the gun. He had already seen dead bodies in the stalls, putting two and two together that the Pete he was facing was the one causing the chaos. 
Recognizing that this Pete was from the future, he quickly understood that to break the loop, he had to eliminate him. The catch? No gun on his end. That's when he recalled a hint from one of his future selves, this it, last request and closing the door. So, when gun-wielding Pete asked about his last request, our Pete caught on, took a trip to the stall, and shut the door, steering clear of his fate. Now, the question arises, how did he know this door led him to the past? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Some moment back he saw the version of Pete who time-traveled to the past and provided the instructions for his future, and by following those steps, he should ideally end up in the past. That's precisely what he did. When he emerged in the past, he conveyed the same instructions to his past self, guiding him to the door Pete used earlier, ultimately leading him to the future. By repeating this action, Pete avoided creating alternate timelines. When he reached the future, he discovered gun-wielding Pete searching for him in the stall. He promptly closed the door, and thanks to the time delay associated with the past door, the bullet Pete fired traveled back in time and hit him. That's how he closed the loop. During this time loop journey, spending ample time with himself, Pete came to realize the immorality within, aligning with the generator's prophecy of him being a bad person. However, there's still one puzzling aspect, the origin of the gun. Pete wasn't the one who initially had it. If you have the answer, drop it in the comments. So, if you enjoyed this video explanation, do give it a thumbs up. Your likes will motivate me to produce more content like this regularly. If you have any unanswered questions, feel free to ask in the comments.